It's Thursday, the 12th week of Ordinary Time. Thanks for joining us today in prayer. Shelby is offering our reflection on the scripture today. How blessed we are. So thank you for being here. I'm Father Ron, and of course, this is the God Minute. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Psalm 19 The Path of Holiness God has made a path on which we are to walk. Before his children are precepts and principles that direct us in the way of peace and joy. He has given meaning to life, the fulfillment of our deepest longings. These things are more precious and of greater value than anything we could ever experience or dare to imagine. This is the course I must travel. It is not easy. I make so many mistakes. Faults and obsessions plague me. O oh God, set me free from their tenacious hold. Encompass me with your love and grace, that these things may not stand between you and me. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. But what about you? Jesus asked. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Things are very loud nowadays. Screens constantly within reach, shouting thousands of contradictory things. Things to excite you, entice you, scare you, anger you, sell to you, numb you. Even in the midst of a pandemic, after so much time isolated in our homes, the world is not any quieter. It is exhausting. It is confusing and it is painful. In today's reading, Peter cut through all of the noise. He had heard all the names of Jesus being spoken, all the malicious rumors and hopeful whispers. He had listened through the din and heard the truth. And we aspire to that sort of wisdom, don't we? to discern well, to hear well, to have a heart open to that which is true. But how do we get there? I think about this more and more as I grow older and the world around me changes. When I was younger, I had a very particular idea of what discernment meant, whether it was vocational or otherwise. It was all about praying until an answer came out of the blue, clear as day, and hoping it wasn't just me interjecting my own thoughts. Discernment can look so much like justifying our own wants and needs in the name of God, and I was constantly worried about doing it wrong. It seemed so mystical, so out of my reach, And those that spoke about their discernments made it sound almost fanciful in their calm assuredness. As with so many other things, I have found that the real work of discerning truth is less fairy tale and more flesh. This question Jesus asks does not come at the beginning of his ministry. Peter is not asked who Jesus is from the boat before his call. 
He is asked after they have traveled and preached, shared meals in the warmth of fires. They had seen struggles and victories side by side. This was not a question asked of a stranger by a stranger. This was a question asked by a teacher and a friend. Peter could hear through the noise because he was searching for a voice he already knew well. We are called to fight for justice, to mourn with mourners, to feed the hungry, to be the hands of Christ in the world. And there is discernment there, serious work, for us to see who is suffering and what work must be done even if we are afraid or don't know where to go. So how do we know where we must go and what work must be done? That wisdom comes from intimate knowledge, from coming to others with open eyes and hearts. We must, like Peter before us, form relationship with those who are different from us and humbly work to know them. It is only then that we can hear when they cry, cut through the lies spoken about them, the din shouted around them, and see the truth wherever it might be. Christ became flesh to see and to know and experience relationship with us, and to model that we should be doing the same. Humbly meet and know others without prejudice or assumption. Hear through the noise that which is true. And be spurred by the call of that truth into action, my friends. This is the work we must do. And in the words of our Lord, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, if my heart doesn't learn to trust your word when it tells me things I don't want to hear, then my heart won't accept it when it tells me things I desperately do want to hear about your love and forgiveness. Teach me to trust your word. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God pour out upon you his blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for praying with us today here at the God Minute. God bless you, protect you, and we'll see you tomorrow.